Welcome. Yes, Lord. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday, everyone. I can't hear the voice of the Alpha GCK location at this time. I said, Happy Sunday, everyone, in Jesus' name. The Lord be with you. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord empower you. And the Lord give you that grace, that love, that mercy, that supernatural touch that never fails in any life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name because you are worthy to be worshipped. And we come to worship you. And Lord, as we worship, you speak to our heart. You reveal your mind to us. And you grant us the grace and the strength and the power that we will be and will do what you want us to be and to do in Jesus' name. Lord, pour your love into every heart. And let that love from our heart reach out to everyone around us every time, every day, all the days of our life in Jesus' name. Amen. Help us, Lord, as we come to worship, to forget every other thing and to set a focus, a mind, a love, a passion upon you, our God our Savior, our Redeemer, and the one that is sending us forth to go and show his love in our communities. I pray, Lord, that your word will impart every life, even today, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another good amen before you sit down. Yeah. The Lord be with you and the Lord bless you. You can sit down. He was here because of the GCK. The theme at this time is the power that never fails. You understand? That power is coming from God because God is the God that can never fail because of that is faith the faith we have in him in his mercy his mercy will never fail it's grace the grace that he gives us that grace can never fail and now i want to concentrate today on the love that never fails the love of god for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, believes in him, will not perish but have everlasting life. From generation to generation, from century to century, from year to year, from one location to the other, from one part of the world to another, that love remains the same. And in your life, in my life, in every life, it's the love that never fails. The love manifested at Calvary. The love manifested through Jesus Christ is crucifixion, is death, and is resurrection. The love that he shows is now on the right hand of majesty on high, making it a session for us and praying for us that what he had done on the cross of Calvary will avail for everyone and what comes from Calvary to every creature, to everyone, that it will prevail all through generations. That love is what I want to talk about. The love comes from him to us. And then there is a reciprocal love. That is, the love enters us. 
and the love now goes back to him we love him because he first loved us and then we love the brethren the body of christ if we love the head the head of the church then we have to love the body and so we love the believers he said a new commandment i give unto you that ye love one another greater love as no man than this that a man should give his life for his friends and he says this is a sign that people will know that you are my disciples if you have love one towards another i'm reading to you from second corinthians i'm reading from chapter five and we're looking at verse 14 in second corinthians chapter 5 reading from verse 14 for the love of christ constraineth us because we us judge that if one died for all look at that he died for all because he loves all he does not want anyone to perish if one died for all then were all dead and then in verse 15 it says and that he died for all don't miss that he didn't die for just the jews he didn't die for just some selected gentiles he died for all everyone everyone in every generation even for you and for him and for her and for everyone he christ because the final sacrifice is the acceptable sacrifice is the savior and the only savior the appointed savior from god the father in heaven he made that provision of salvation for everyone and that he died for all that they which live that live by sacrifice that lay through his salvation that lay through his substitutionary work of atonement the people that believe on the lord that they which live should not live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again we're looking at first john chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 9 in first john chapter 4 reading from verse 9 it said in this was manifested the love of God toward us everyone towards us in this in the sacrifice of Christ in the substitutionary atonement of Christ in the salvation that Christ has provided it said in this in this sacrifice in this substitution in what christ has done was manifested the love of god toward us because that god sent his only begotten son into the world that he might we might live through him look at verse 10 in verse 10 it says Hearing is love. Not that we loved God, no, we didn't, but that He loved us and He sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Now, in verse 19, verse 19 says, Now we love Him because He manifested that love. It came from Him first, and then it goes from us in gratitude in appreciation in love because of what he has done now we love him because he first loved us that's what we're talking about today the two-way love one way coming from up from heaven coming to earth to us and the other way coming from earth and going back to heaven the true way love that never never fails the true way love that never never fails we're looking at this on the three subtitles one two three number one the revealed love of god for man through christ number two the reciprocal love of man for god in christ number three the rewardable love of manifold goodness 
toward Christ. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the revealed love of God now. God loves us. He loves, he loves, he keeps on loving. If it's not revealed, how do I know? If I don't have the Bible, how do I know? If the gospel is not written, how do I know? And if Christ has not revealed unto us who the Father is, his love, his mercy, his compassion, if it's not revealed, how do you know? He reveals that love and we rejoice in the revelation of the love of God, the revealed love of God for man through Christ. Look at John, familiar verse of scripture, chapter 3, verse 16. It says, for God so loved the world. We didn't know that. Nicodemus didn't know that. All those Jews didn't know that. Religious people didn't know that. But the revelation has now come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever there's no discrimination whosoever there's no partiality whosoever there's no selection whosoever anyone everyone that whosoever believeth in him should not perish i will not perish you will not perish in jesus name because the love is revealed that we should not perish but have everlasting life look at romans chapter 5 we're looking at verse 8 in romans chapter 5 verse 8 but god commended his love toward us but god commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. How do we know the love of God? The ultimate love of God. The great love of God. The unsurpassable love of God. He gives us rain. That's good. That's not the height of the love. He gives us sunshine. That's good. He gives us fruitful seasons. That's not the height of the love of God. He says, God, come in death. It's love toward us. The final love, a great love, that unsurpassable love. What's that? In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The revealed love of God for man through Christ. Look at three things there very quickly. Number one is the redeeming love of God for the penitent. Number two, is the restoring love of God for the prodigal. Number three, is the refining love of God for his peculiar people, his pardoned people, his purged people, his saved people, his sanctified people. He has refining love for them who are saved, who are purged, who are sanctified, who are made holy, who become his peculiar people. Look at number one. Number one, the redeeming love of God for the penitent. Now, the love of God is there, is constant, but it comes to you, it comes to me, it comes to everyone when we repent when we become penitent when we're sorry for the past life we live when we're sorry for contradicting god opposing god going the negative direction god says go this way and then you go the opposite direction that love does not reach you at that time but when you turn and you say i hear i know the voice of God is calling me out of my darkness, out of my damnation, out of my defilement. He calls me to the straight and the narrow way. And you turn and you repent. That redeeming love comes for the penitent. Look at Ezekiel chapter 18, reading from verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you. O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Hold on. 
God is love. But God is also holy. God is also righteous. God is also just. And the justice of God is still there. His hatred for sin is still there. And his punishment for sin that continues without any repentance, that punishment is still there. The love is manifested when you hate what he hates, you love what he loves, you turn away from what he hates, and then you turn your mind, your focus, your vision, your faith, your acceptance to what God loves. That's why he says, you people, house of Israel, every one of you, I will judge you according to your ways. And now, that's the justice of God. He hates sin. And he hates evil, he hates iniquity, he hates transgression. But now he's going to manifest his love. He says, repent. He wants to show love. He wants to forgive. He wants to set you free. He wants to make you have salvation. So he says, repent and turn yourselves from all not some, and from all, not the ones that are visible, okay, they have caught me as they have caught me. They did do this and they have the ability to say, yes, I'm sorry, not, not just that one. All, the ones that are open, the ones that are hidden, the ones that are obvious, the ones that are visible, and the ones that are not visible. It says, it wants everyone to repent and turn from all your transgressions so that iniquity shall not be your ruin. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, cast away from you all your transgressions. We don't select, okay, I repent of that. I'm going to keep that. I run away from that. I'm going to be kind of, uh, you know, push myself and remain in this other one. All your transgression wherewith that whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart. And a new spirit, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Then verse 32, in verse 32, for I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies, says the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. That is the love of God that he has for us. When we turn, when we repent and when we face the Lord and we say, Lord, I'm sorry for the evil that I have done. I know you don't want me to perish, but if I continue in my sin, the one that dies in sin is last breath in sin, is last utterance in sin, is last desires in sin, his last disposition in sin, the one that dies in sin will spend eternity on the other side where there will be punishment forever and ever. That's what we're told in Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 19. It says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasing. It says, now, I love the sinner. But I don't smile at the sinner. I love at the sinner, but I don't justify his sinfulness. I love the sinner, but I don't pet him. And I don't say, no, that's right. That's right. I know you're weak. I know you're sinful. I know you have bad habits. All the same. Go ahead. I love you still. No. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke. And I chase him. And he says, be zealous, therefore, and repent. And then he says in verse 20, in verse 20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, fellowship with him, and he with me. Look at number two here. Number two here is the restoring love of God for the prodigal the prodigal who is the prodigal is the one that was at home but then uh, he saw something outside and the field afar off is always greener than the field nearby 
the pleasure afar off is always uh, more uh, is sweeter than the pleasure here at home and the desire for those outside things far country pulled him and he said father give me my portion I don't want to stay here anymore. What's the problem with you, young man? You seen the greener field outside there. When you get there, you understand? It's mirage. Mirage. What's a mirage? Have you ever traveled on the road and the, and the road goes on like that smooth and it's far? When you look ahead, it looks like there's water there. There's river there. And you say, wonderful, look at the river. Those who uh, travel in the desert, they find that they're very much thirsty and there's no water here and it's in the desert place and then they look far ahead it looks like they're looking at water no it's not water it's mirage 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 and for many people it happens like that they always look outside the fence they look beyond their territory they look beyond their home they look beyond the provision that Lord had given them and then they stray away and as they get there they see that there's no water there there's no grass there and there's no sustainers there there's no provision there mirage mirage of life but the prodigal did not know that so he went to the far country and over there he began to suffer as he began to suffer the father was still thinking about him and the father wanted him back but he never came back until he suffered he spent everything that he had. You know, some people are like that. They were born again before. They were saved before. They were children of God. And then something entered their mind. And they feel, well, this, uh, this kind of life is too dull. You come, you come to church. You read the Bible. You sing the songs. And you do everything. You attend the GCK. You attend the retreat. You attend conference. Is that all? And they think that over there, beyond the fence, they think that over there, but there outside the world there they think there's a great pleasure there there's great excitement there and there's great satisfaction there so they go off now they get there they see that the people there too they are not happy the people there they're suffering the people there they are sick. the people there they, they are lawless and the people there they do not have the peace of God in their hearts when you come to the bottom then they realize it was better for me when I was home with Christ home with my father home with the brethren home with the Bible when I was at home with the promises of God with the joy of salvation and now they want to come back this restoring love for the prodigal restoring love of God for the prodigal and look at this in Matthew chapter 15 and we're looking at verse 15 Matthew chapter 15 we're looking at verse 15 this is where the prodigal son realized and came to himself because of the condition in which he found himself it says then answered uh, Peter declare unto us the parable Luke chapter 15 thank you very much Luke chapter 15 we're looking at verse 15 Luke chapter 15 we're looking at verse 15 and he went and joined himself that's the prodigal son prodigal daughter prodigal wife prodigal mother prodigal father prodigal husband prodigal professional prodigal Christian, prodigal church man, prodigal church woman, he was in the Lord, he was in the family but now his mind his heart has gone out and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine, look at verse 16, in verse 16 it says and he would fain, he would have love to feed himself to be filled in his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him things were very bad that's the condition of the backslider that's the condition of the one who has left home 
has left the grace of God, has left the circle of the love of God and the salvation of the Lord, and is gone out into the world, into the world of sin, into the world of worldliness, into the world of evil. That's the condition because we are told in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 15, the second part there, the way of the transgressor is hard the way of transgressors hard and look at uh, luke chapter 15 now we're looking at verse 17 in verse 17 it says and he came to himself and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and uh, to spare and I perish with hunger in this place look at this in verse 18 now in verse 18 it says I will arise and go to my father but he goes, son how do you know the way back to your father he said the way that took me to the far country that same way I turn I retrace myself and I'll get to the father when a backslider has backsliding and he wants to come back to the Lord what's the way back to the Savior the way back to the Lord the way that took you where you landed that is the same way that brings you back if you follow the way of indulgence you indulge yourself you indulge your flesh you indulge your mind you indulge your private life and then you just give yourself out no discipline no self-discipline and no resisting of temptation the way that took you far is the way that brings you back i indulged myself i got into that i was there was no restraint there was no control no restraint will come and control will come and then you trace your way back and you say i will get back to the father if you got substance because now you are no self-control and nobody commanding you you're, you're not anybody under anybody's authority and then substance comes cigarette comes tobacco comes and say you know alcohol comes that's the way that we took in getting you to the far country you're coming back you have to drop all those things the way that took you up to the land to the far land is that same way you will retrace yourself and come back and you repent and turn to the Lord and then you say I will arise and go unto my father and will say unto him father I have sinned I have sinned against heaven and before thee now that was intention you must follow that intention with action I will arise that was decision you must follow that decision with action and that was just a proposal I will I will I will you must follow that proposal with performance he said I will look at verse 19 in verse 19 he said and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, and he arose and came. And he arose and came. He didn't say another day in misery another day in suffering another day in disobedience another day in self-centeredness another day in self-will he said i will arise and then immediately without wasting time without gambling with his soul without gambling with his destiny he arose and he came to his father but when he was yet a great way of his father saw him and had compassion that is love that is love mercy came before because he came back because he repented because the prodigal turned he turned unto the lord the father ran and fell on his neck and kissed him in verse 21 verse 21 says and the son said unto him father i 
have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son he said father I don't come because of any marriage you know some prodigals but sliders they come they were preachers before they backslid they were pastors before they backslid they were Christian workers before they backslid. Now they went to the far country. Maybe they get second woman, second wife. Maybe they divorce their wives. Maybe they went into fraudulent business. Maybe they go into things that the child of God should not get into because of the grace available in our lives. And now they are coming back. All the wagon that you brought on yourself. All those evil things you attracted and you brought in when you are coming back you will drop them they're the properties of the far country and you drop them and you come and then some people will come and say no oh, pastor over here i'm back i'm back i was a pastor of a district before i was a worker i was singing before now i'm back and i want to do the the man did not do that you don't merit anything if you're coming back you come back in humility you are not saying, uh, make me a pastor now. Because, you know, in all those other places, they are ready to give me this opportunity. And that opportunity, I am no more worthy. That is the humility of a real body girl that is coming back. Coming back to the family of God. And coming back to the fold. He said, I am not worthy. Look at verse 22. In verse 22 it says, But the father said unto his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. That's the love we're talking about. The love of God. The restorative love of God. The restoring love of God for the prodigal. At the prodigal return. And he says, and put on him and put a ring of acceptance. A ring of authority on a son and shoes on his feet. Look at verse 23. In verse 23, and bring hither the fatted calf and they kill it and let us eat and be merry. Why? Verse 24. It says, For this my son was dead. Did he die? Not physically, but the pleasures of the world, the dainties of the world, the practices of the world, dead in the soul, dead in the spirit. She that liveth in pleasure is dead dead while she liveth she that liveth in fornication she that liveth in adultery she that liveth in the pleasures of the flesh is dead spiritually why she liveth physically that's why the father said this my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found and he began to be merry there was joy in heaven there'll be joy in heaven for everyone that returns home today home to the family of our god in heaven in jesus name i don't know why adam our amen is always amen God bless you number three now number three we're looking at the refining love of God for his peculiar people. Now, all sinners are just the common people. They are every dick and hairy. Nothing peculiar about a sinner. Everybody sins and he sins. Nothing special about a sinner. Everybody lies and he tells lies too. Everybody steals and he's stealing too. Everybody has their heart, their mind, giving to the devil, and he gives his life to the devil. There's nothing peculiar about any sinner. 
whether that sinner goes to church or doesn't go to church whether that sinner claims to be a man or woman of the bible or not there's nothing peculiar with any sinner come on like every other person but when you come to the lord and you confess your sin and you forsake your sin when you come to the lord and you are cleansed in the blood of the lamb when you come to the lord and he pardons you and he purges you when you come to the lord and your life becomes new completely if any man be in christ he is a new creature behold all things are passed away and all things are become new when you, you drop the fraud and you drop the stealing and you drop the you know the adultery the fornication and you drop all the defilement and the blood of jesus washes you and cleanses you in the private in the public you are clean before the lord that's what makes you a peculiar treasure unto the lord and then the lord takes that purged person that pardoned person and that a sanctified person and that person that has come to the lord and he wants to make you peculiar so that you'll not be like every dick and harry and he cleanses your life and he cleanses you internally and externally a peculiar person the refining love of god look at malachi chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 2 malachi chapter 3 we're looking at verse 2 but who may abide the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeareth for he is like a refiner's fire and like the fuller's soul then in verse 3 it tells us in verse 3 it says and he shall siege as a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness that is what makes us makes you makes me a peculiar person before the lord a peculiar member of the church saved and now there is the purging there is the purifying of the heart and of the life of the person touch to the new testament and look at titus chapter 2 and i'm reading from verse 13 titus chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 13 it says looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great god and our savior jesus christ look at verse 14 in verse 14 it tells us who gave himself for us he has saved us but the work of redemption does not end at forgiveness at salvation a justification he goes on he gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works now you have to examine your christian experience it's easy to say i'm saved say it another way are you free from transgression are you free from sin that's what it means to be saved if you say i'm saved it means you have the grace of god that teaches us that we deny ungodliness and what they lost and that we now become sober righteous godly in this present world that is salvation many people say i'm sanctified easy to say but are you purged are you purified are you peculiar or is your life the same as when you said i was saved the temptation you faced at the time you said i am saved you say you are sanctified the same temptation you are facing and the succumbing the submission and the falling 
and yielding to all those pressures when you said you are sick now you say you are sanctified you see yielding to the same thing isn't it good to go back to Calvary and say I need the refiner's hand I need the purging I need the purifying so that you become a peculiar person now the lies you are telling after you said I'm saved pastor no I don't tell lies oh, hold on with action if your action is calculated to deceive somebody that's lying if your body language is calculated to deceive somebody and to swear him away from the truth unto what is not truth that's lying and you're saying no, i'm sanctified hold on when you are sanctified all forms of deception all forms of anger all forms of hatred all forms of depravity inside everything is cleansed he purifies us he sanctifies us he refines us he takes away all those roots of the adamic nature and now that we're purified he makes us peculiar people and we're zealous of good works we need to examine where we stand whether the refiner's fire has come within us has done the work or not if not we have the chance again today he is still there he is the sanctifier he is the purifier and he is the one that will take all those things away from our nature and he gives us a new nature a new heart a new spirit and now we live the sanctified life we'll come to point number two now number two is the reciprocal love of man for god in christ he loves us so much and because he loves us so much we're grateful and that gratitude will make us to show love back to the lord there are three things we're looking at here we're looking at number one the unrivaled love for god by the converted there's no rival and there is no reservation you love god now he saved me he forgave me he taught my life and all. he wrote my name in the book of life and therefore i love him above everything above everyone the unrivaled love for god by the converted number two the unrelenting love for godliness by the consecrated unrelenting love for godliness you love godliness like the drunkard loved his bottle like the smoker loved his packet of cigarettes like the wayward man loved the strange woman like the wayward woman loved the strange man now your love is centered on god and it's unrivaled the unrivaled or relenting love for Godliness by the consecrated. Number three is the repressed love in gratitude for his compassion. Look at number one there. Number one is the arrivals love for God by the converted. When we are converted, truly converted, we love him. And there's no rival. There's nothing that takes the place, whatever the world world may present to us whatever satan may present to us you say no satan i've graduated from that i don't i don't love that anymore i belong to god spirit soul and body entirely and completely and that thing will not attract me there is no magnet in my heart to be magnetized uh, to the world because now you love the lord without a rival look at john John chapter 21 verse 15 it says so when they are dying Jesus said to Simon Peter 
And he said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Does your fish rival my love? Does your net rival my work? Does your past, what you left in the past, in your past life, and then you are coming back to that, is that a rival to my love? And then he says, Lord, ye Lord, you know, I love you. Thou knowest that I love you. When you love God and you love the Lord without any rival, without any reservation, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your being, all your skill, all your ability, and in all your activities, everything centered on the love of God. That is the love of the one who is grateful to God. You save me, and in gratitude, I return the love unto you. Psalm 119. In Psalm 119, I'm reading from verse 127. Therefore, I love thy commandments. I love thy commandments. Now, there are people that say they love God. I love your healing. That's good. I love the deliverance. That's good. I love the provision. That's good. I love the miracle. Hold on now. I love the commandments. The commandments of God. You love the fish. You love the bread. You love the manna. You love the butter. But how about the commandments of God? You know, if they are doing Bible teaching, well, I'm, I'm not interested in that. You know what I'm interested in? I'm interested in the power of faith. And the power that makes a decree. And God will rain the blessings down. <laughs> there you are, bread and butter, Christian. But the man said, because of the love of God for me. And Christ went to Calvary for me. And he died for me. I don't only really love his healing. I don't only really love his deliverance. I love his commandments. That's the evidence of a saved soul. That's the evidence of a person who has been forgiven and who is so grateful to God. He loves the commandment of God now. Therefore, I love thy commandments above gold, yea, above fine gold. Look at verse 128. In 128, therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right. And I hate every false way. Look at number two there. Number two there, we're talking about the unrelenting love for godliness by the consecrated. When you come to the Lord, you lay everything on the altar and not too long after you are born again, you will listen to the song, all to Jesus I surrender. We don't only really sing, we do it. We mention one by one the things that are precious to us, the things that had grabbed our hearts before, and the things we're giving ourselves to before, and the things we couldn't do without before. We say, All to Jesus, I surrender. All to Him. I freely give. Nobody is forcing me. It's not the pastor forcing me. If he's the pastor forcing me, when I'm with him, when I'm before him, I will appear to surrender. When the pastor is not there, I will pick up those things because I'm doing it, I'm surrendering this because of the pastor. I really don't have conviction. And it's not, not too long. If you keep on coming, you will hear unto him I consecrate all. Jesus is my portion forever. And when you sing that, that you consecrate all the things, all the joys and the toys of the world, and the moths that will be moth eating, they don't have any interest in me. I don't have any interest in them. Everything I surrender, and I'm loving the Lord unrelentingly. I don't relent. Everything I have, everything I've got, I put at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ because I love him. Look at uh, verse, uh, uh, verse uh, 128 there. Psalm 119. I'm reading from what verse 128 again. 128. Psalm 119. And we're looking at 128. Say, Therefore, I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, and I hate 
every evil way whatever the evil way whoever is bringing that evil way you are so committed to the lord a woman is bringing that evil way introducing something to you that contradicts your consecration your commitment to the lord i hate every false way a man with money backs up money is bringing something to you that contradicts the love for christ i hate every evil way the world is making a proposal to you and you say why don't you take this and you'll be a happy young man you'll be a happy young woman i hate every false way the people who are saved and the people who are refined by the lord they love the lord without a rival and their love is unrelenting we're coming to uh, matthew chapter 24 and i'm reading from verse 12 matthew chapter 24 we're looking at verse 12 it says because and because iniquity shall abound in the world around us iniquity abounds wherever you are you are in the you know secondary school there are some gangs there and they want to lure you into into that occult society in university you know those things are there you'll see them the pollutions of the world the evil of the world the iniquity and the transgressions of the world or you are working in the office anyway where you are all those things are there that are contrary to the principle and practice of righteousness and the lord jesus said because iniquity shall abound it says the love of many shall wax cold look at verse 13 in verse 13 but he that shall endure unto the end that's me i said that's me I caught you. Maybe you are not paying attention. When you are paying attention, if I say something that requires for you to reply, you reply. Now pay attention. It says, He that shall endure unto the end. I will endure to the end. The same shall be saved. That, that's the relenting love. You love the Lord and nothing will sway you and nothing will dribble you and nothing will sidetrack you or distract you because your love for God and for godliness is unrelenting. Look at number three here. Number three is the unrepressed love. Unrepressed love. What does that mean? You know, sometimes you love something, but the people around, the surrounding, and they look at, they looking at your life, you will not show on your face that you love that thing you're not sure what your body attitude or language that you love that you repress that love sometimes people say i love christ but you know my friends are around i don't want to show that kind of love because they begin to question me so you love christ to that point they repress their love other people they love the bible they love the word of god but when they are coming to church they wrap that bible in newspaper paper what's that as uh, a book this is not a book this is the holy bible they repress their love and then they're coming to church and somebody miss them where are you going i'm going there where i'm going to somebody there you're coming to jesus when you're coming to church jesus is not somebody there you're repressing your love bring it out express your love let the people around you know what you stand for let them know who you love let them know who is number one in your life that he loved me he died on the cross and when he died on the cross that shameful death it was an exposed love a shameful lord a shameful death that he died and if he did not cover up his love for you you come out and say i love jesus he's my savior i love the lord he's my redeemer i love him he died for me and you're not repressing your love and hiding your love it's the repressed love in gratitude because 
of his compassion look at uh, mark chapter 5 reading from verse 18 mark chapter 5 verse 18 and when he was come into the sheep he that had been possessed with devils Preach him that he might be with him. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, how be it Jesus allowed him not, permitted him not, suffered him not, but says unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. Don't have a repressed love. He did love. A master controlled life or love that they can tell in the office. You see born again, we can tell. Does see have new life? We can tell. Does he love the Lord? We can tell. Will he still follow what we're doing together? We can tell. Has he become a peculiar Christian? We can tell. Has he become born again? Born again? We cannot. Has he become sanctified? Purified? We can tell. Or is he still like us? It's like an amphibian. It's like chameleon. He's in Rome. He does like the Romans do. And he's in Jerusalem. He does like the Jews do. He's in Antioch. He does like the Gentiles. Come out. If you're saved. If you're born again. If you're a real child of God. And if you're grateful that you are saved. Let there be unrepressed love. In gratitude to God. For his compassion we're coming now to point number three point number three we're looking at the rewardable love of manifold goodness toward christ the love we have to christ because of what he's done for us because of his grace because of his goodness and because of his sacrifice the love that has shown us and now we're showing that love back to him that love if it's properly done if it is not eye service if it is from the depth of our heart it's rewardable love for the manifold goodness toward Christ. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the unfailing rewards of faithful brethren in service. Number two, the unfavorable rewards of filthy backsliders and sinners. Number three, the unfading rewards for fruitful believers and servants of God. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the unfailing rewards for faithful brethren in service when we come to the lord we don't wait until somebody makes me a worker in my street in my school in my college in my place of work anywhere i find myself i am a servant of christ I am the mouthpiece of the Lord. And we tell, we share those on our least uh, contacts in our phone. We share the love of God with them. We share the message of salvation uh, with them. Everyone we can contact, we share the grace, the goodness, and the glory that we have seen of the Lord and from the Lord we share with them. Look at Colossians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 23. It says Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 and whatsoever ye do whatsoever that covers every area of our lives as an individual, as a bachelor, as a spinster, as a married woman, 
as a married man, as a father, as a mother, as a professional, as an office worker, as a church man, a church woman, anywhere, everywhere, any community, any country, in the private, in the public, and whatsoever ye do, any action of your hand, any talk of your mouth, anything you are listening to, everywhere you are walking to, anyone you are interacting with, and whatsoever you do, any time of the day, in the day or in the night, if you're a real child of God, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily. Whatever you cannot do heartily, don't do it. If your mind is like this, like that, is it good? Is it bad? Should a Christian do this? Should a Christian not do this? Should a Christian go this direction? Should a Christian not go that direction? Should a Christian think of this or not think of this? Whatever you have a double mind for, and whatever you have a doubtful mind for, and you cannot do actually, and you cannot do it publicly for everybody to see whatsoever you do, do it actually as to the Lord and not unto men not unto men when you try to revenge avenge yourself against a man against a woman you're doing it to the lord because everything you do now as a child of god as a member of the family of god you do unto the lord and not unto men Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me me i've never persecuted you i've never known you i've never met you how would i be persecuting you everything you do against the members of the body everything you do against the followers of the savior everything you do against the people peculiar people of the refiner of christ you're doing against christ and so now if you want to be rewarded for the good things you've done it says whatsoever ye do do it heartily wholeheartedly as to the lord and not unto men look at verse 24 in verse 24 knowing that of the lord ye shall receive the reward knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance for ye serve the Lord Christ in everything you do ye serve the Lord Christ let's look at number two here number two is the unfavorable rewards for filthy backsliders and sinners even backsliders too they have their reward but it's not favorable Sinners have their rewards, but it's not favorable. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 18. Acts chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 18. It says, And now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity it's talking about judas a backslider a sinner an apostate he got this and then it says was the reward of iniquity falling headlong he burst asunder in the midst and all his bowels gushed out verse 19 in verse 19 it says and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much as that, as that field is called in their proper tongue a seldom man. That is to say the field of blood. In verse 20 it says in verse 20 for it is written in the book of the Psalms. Let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein that the reward of favor reward of backsliders and sinners and his bishopric his ministry his position let another take 
verse 21 in verse 21 it tells us verse 21 it says wherefore of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us verse 22 in verse 22 beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection verse 23 in verse 23 and they appointed joseph called basabas who was so named just us and matthias verse 24 in verse 24 it says and he prayed and said thou lord which knowest the hearts of all men show whether of these two which of these two thou hast chosen verse 25 that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship from which look at this not this where we're going from which judas by transgression fell judas backslider by transgression fell judas apostate by transgression fell look at this that he might go to his own place that he might go to his own place the backslider who dies in backsliding the sinner who dies in sin the apostate who dies in opposition against Christ he has a place and that's where his unfavorable reward on the other side will be I pray I will not be you will not be we shall not be Judas in Jesus name yeah. that one demands a great amen yeah. because if anyone becomes backslider and he dies in backsliding he dies in the shrine of the devil he dies in the shrine of a cultic healer he dies in the shrine of the people who worship the devil and they do all those things for and he dies in that condition he dies as a backslider he dies as a prodigal. He dies an as an apostate. And his reward is in the other place. I pray you remain a believer. Amen. I remain a believer. I will keep on on this narrow path. We don't go to the broad way that leads to destruction. We follow this narrow path. And heaven will be your Lord on the final day in Jesus' name. Amen. We're coming to number three here. Number three here is the unfading rewards for fruitful believers and servants. You will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. If I never plant anything, I do I become fruitful? If I never sow any good thing in the lives of other people, how do I become fruitful? If I'm not thoughtful, if I don't plan, if I don't plan every day, I'm, not, I'm going to do good today. I'm going to exhibit, express the Christian life today. And I'm going to show the love of God to Christ, to God, and to everyone around me. And because of that, I'm going to sow the good seed, the good word, the good action the good language in the lives of other people if i don't sow how do i read you have to sow something good to your neighbors to your friends even to your foes and to everybody around and show the love of god unto them that is what makes us fruitful and there is the unfading rewards for fruitful believers and fruitful servants first peter 
chapter 1 reading from verse 3 blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead and then in verse 4 it says to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away of fading rewards that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you reserved in heaven for you for who but we have to get to heaven <clears throat> we have to get to heaven to get that reward that is reserved in heaven for us you are saved you are walking and living like a saved soul you are sanctified you have that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord you have the power of the Holy Ghost and it makes you fruitful in the service of the Lord and the Lord is recording he's done that good thing there's the reward right it for him and then he's done that evangelistic work that's a reward write it down for him and he's done that he's given everything he has for the uh, spread of the gospel write that thing for him and those rewards are reserved in heaven and you don't know how it has piled up the great things and the angels are saying ah, who is this man that the reward is just piling up for him waiting for him who is this woman rewards piling up waiting for him waiting for her in heaven but you don't know how the angels are even looking for you when he comes in here and there was mark him his face with his name so so this is the man so this is the woman and these things are reserved for you and the devil knows that and because he wants and he knows it only when you get there you'll be given those things then he brings uh, maybe a flashy lady to the man and that flashy lady dangling like this like a modern day jezebel and he attracts your attention and now you forget the great rewards reserved in heaven for you and all the good things you have done and that dangling dazzling jezebel delilah sways you off and then you are gone that heaven where is it now and the rewards that are reserved for you there how do you get or maybe it's a woman there's this uh, solomon is adding woman to woman he's adding this to that and he's always flaunting his riches i have this i have that and you know every the appearance is like and he say, hey come on here i'll beautify your life i will take care of you everything you're looking for this is the wisest man on earth and he wants to uh, add you to his harem and then you forget all the things that are reserved in heaven for you and then you fall for Solomon Solomon the modern day Solomon I pray you will not fall that whatever whatever they dangle before you and whatever they show before you nothing of this world will cut you off from the reward reserved for you in heaven in Jesus name reward for you sparkling great infinite eternal the lord has reserved for you in heaven i will be there i will be there i must be there i'll cross every sea i'll climb any mountain i will resist every temptation i will push off any hindrance because i must be there how about you i said how about you why don't you forget all the mundane things of this world and understand there's a reward unfading reward for you as you are fruitful as a believer and you're fruitful as a servant of god let's rise up let's rise up now and talk to the lord and say lord i must be there i will be there heaven 
I will get there. You will get there in Jesus' name. If you are not born again, pray to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Save my soul. Cleanse my heart. Convert my spirit. Help me, Lord, to be a real child of God. Saved. Born again. Free from sin. If you are not sanctified, call upon the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Sanctify me. Purify me. Refine me. And let the blood of the Lamb cleanse me from every sin. You need the power of the Holy Ghost you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem all Judea and Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth. Let him give you the power and nothing will be able to make you fall. Pray unto the Lord. The Lord will answer your prayer. This is the